Across Canada, animal hospitals and clinics are at a breaking point. Too many appointments, not enough staff. Well, I've seen tears and just like people wanting to leave the profession um, and, and, and people leaving the profession. Lucas just got dropped off. Dr. Rocky Liss and two partners just opened Skyline Animal Hospital in North Vancouver. It might be too small to get it. Today, Dr. Liss needs to decide if Lucas needs surgery. Meow Meow is getting prepped to have a mass removed from her abdomen. Hey guys, how's it going? And while that happens, Dr. Liss checks in on Jack, a senior golden doodle overdue for vaccines. It's at the very least constant and at times feels quite frantic. We did an aspirate and it was... Dr. Liss and his colleagues can barely keep up. There is a shortage of veterinarians um, and we're seeing that acutely right now. Casey Meikle is a registered vet tech, essentially a nurse for many species. She's worked in the industry for more than a decade and has never seen it like this. We are busier now. There is, you know, waiting lists for vaccine appointments, which never used to happen. There's waiting lists for surgeries that are just your typical spay surgery or neuter, neuter surgery. And those are things that I've never experienced before COVID. Even before the pandemic, the Canadian Veterinary Medical Association warned of a staffing shortage. Then COVID-19 made everything worse. The CVMA says that 30% of veterinarians and 50% of veterinary staff are in the advanced stages of burnout. I was not able to be the veterinarian that I wanted to be, and I did get burnt out. When Dr. Carissa Mitchell started her career, she was prepared for the intensity of working with sick animals. Emotional owners were harder. I can't stand here and say that that doesn't affect us on a day-to-day -day basis. It is. It definitely wears you down emotionally. All right, good boy. Owners complained about bills and questioned decisions. The money from your bill is not just going directly into veterinarians' pockets. It's to pay for the medicine and for the supplies and the resources that we use. The pandemic meant owners couldn't come into the clinic and all those new puppies needed checkups. It became too much. Dr. Mitchell sought counseling and quit. She now fills in at other clinics and sets her own hours. I love my job, but I am nervous for the future of my profession if um, no changes are made. There are five veterinary schools in Canada. They're highly competitive and students can only attend the program in the region where they live. In total, Canada's vet schools graduate less than 400 Canadian vets each year, a number that barely matches anticipated retirements. The Western College of Veterinary Medicine in Saskatoon has come up with a solution to graduate more vets, but it comes with a price that's directly borne by veterinary students such as Ruth Patton. It was a dream come true. When I got into vet school, it was, well, I should say it was a dream come true, and it was also devastating. Patton is from BC. The province funds 20 seats for vet students. She didn't qualify for one of those, but she did qualify for a new unfunded seat, a program that allows Canadian students to pay international tuition. It's an extra $55,000 per year in addition to the regular tuition. So it's about $69,000 in tuition fees alone uh, per year for the four-year program. Oh, thank you for being here, honey. On average, veterinarians make ninety to $100,000 a year, and many are small business owners without benefits. Patton knows money worries will add stress to an already stressful career. I think a lot of people don't realize we, we don't make the same amount as medical doctors, human doctors, so it's an amount of money that is going to be difficult to pay off in this profession. I empathize with it. I really, really do. You actually carefully just run your Dr. Chris Clark is the associate dean academic at the college. He says the profession can take a toll on mental health, so the college is changing its curriculum. What you're going to do is remove the overgrown wall. It's In addition to clinical skills like this goat herding workshop, these fourth year students will learn about teamwork, personal finance and wellness. And starting next year, there will be new resiliency training. And that's a really comprehensive program that focuses on um, learning skills that you will then develop through your profession to help you deal with challenging circumstances and challenging people, both of which happens in veterinary medicine all the time. Dr. Clark says the shortage so of veterinarians means all of his of students will find work. Right now, they probably have more options than any generation that's ever graduated. Dr. Liss removes the mass from Meow Meow's abdomen. 
It doesn't look like cancer, but a lab will confirm. Will be... The patients continue to pour in. There's even a backyard chicken, lethargic, with a sore foot. Definitely feels me like a whirling feeling at the end of the day. So, <laughs> and that's every day. And that, I, I don't think that's sustainable. Okay, have a good night. The work doesn't end when the last patients leave. There are still calls to make and tomorrow to plan for. It promises to be another busy day. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, North Vancouver.